Well, I think there's a bit of an imbalance here. And I think it's a soft power deficit as well. When we look in this direction, that is to say the West influences the East more than West versa. And forgive me for using the East and West kind of loose, but it, I think it's a lot easier to say this than English speaking uh, language or probably uh, Asian speaking language, Chinese or Chinese. And is, is this intrinsically a problem, this, this imbalance in, in, in pop cultural influence? And I think so. I think in any healthy relationship, or friendship, or marriage, isn't it important for both sides to make an effort to understand the other and that this exchange needs to have a healthy balance? And how do we address this? As an ambassador for Chinese pop music and movies, I have to ask myself the question. Why does this deficit exist? Is it because Chinese music just is lame? Can I answer that? Yeah, I can see some of you are like, stop complaining and write a hit song! <laughs> Side bit! <laughs> um, but actually, there, there's truth in that. And the argument being that the content we've created just isn't as international competitive. And why should we? Well, look at, look at Korean pop, look at K-pop, for example. Korea is an export-based economy, and they're outward-looking, and they must be outward-looking. Chinese pop, on the other hand, can just kind of stay domestic for all over China, speaking territories, and comfortably sustained. So when you're that big and powerful, there are over 160 cities in China with a million or more people. You tend to kind of turn inward and be complacent. So there cert certainly can be an argument made for Chinese pop being not marketed with international sensibilities in mind. But the other side of the argument I think is more interesting and thought provoking and even more true that Western ears aren't familiar with and therefore don't really understand how to appreciate Chinese music. Ouch! <laughs> the reason I think that argument holds water though is because that's exactly what I want. So I happen to know a thing or two about learning to appreciate Chinese pop as a Western. As I was 17 years old, when I went from being an Asian kid in America to being an American kid in Asia, and the entire paradigm suddenly got flipped on its head. I grew up listening to Beastie Boys with Zeppelin, Guns N' Roses, and I found myself in Taiwan listening to the radio and thinking, where's the beat? Where are the screeching guitar solos? But here I am, this American kid in Asia, listening to Chinese music for the first time and thinking, this stuff is lame. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like it. Uh, I, I thought it was a cheesy production of all these love. The singers could have felt like Axel Rose or like Carrie. But then one day, I went to my first Chinese pop concert, and it was Yu Shen Qi. Performing in uh, the Thai Baby Center. Thai Baby Music Center. And as he performed, I looked around at the audience and I saw their faces and the look in their eyes and the responsiveness to his music. And it was clear to me, finally, where the problem lay. It wasn't that the music was lacking, it was my ability to appreciate it and to hear it in the right way. The crowd, they would sing along and be totally immersed in his music and I had this epiphany that I was missing the point. And from now on, I was going to somehow learn how to get it. I was going to learn how to hear with local ears, and I deconstructed and analyzed what it was that made Chinese audiences connect with certain types of melodies and rhythms and song structures and lyrics, and that's what I've been doing for the past almost 20 years. And it took me a long time, I'm still learning, but at some point I not only began to be able to appreciate the music, but I started being able to contribute to it and create my own fresh things. And I think this happens to everyone, really, who's on the outside looking in. It always looks strange. If you look at things from your perspective, you're always going to think that these people are weirdos. What's wrong with them? Why are they listening to this stuff? And I'm saying that you can make an effort. You get it. It can be done, and I am living with that. And um, as an ambassador of Chinese pop, I'm trying to get people to open up to sound that they may not feel is palatable. So 
what else can we do to reduce this imbalance in our popular cultures? Well, maybe we can talk about it. Um, tour more outside of China. But seriously, actually, I think the tides are already starting to change very slowly, very cautiously, almost calculatingly. You see more cross cultural exchange now, more interest in China, definitely a lot of joint ventures, a lot of co productions in recent years. Iron Man 3, Transformers, 53, <laughs> Resident Evil, really, it's, it's, it's beginning to be kind of like a world pop. And that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm focusing on these days. There was K pop, there was K pop, there was C pop, and there's like this W pop that's kind of starting to emerge. It's world pop. And I think, yeah, I, I love that idea that it's not, it's not world music. It's not, like, there used to be a section in HMG called world music. And I was like, ethno musicology class in college. No, but world pop is more about breaking and tearing down. Age-old stereotypes, the artificial confines that have kept us apart for way too long. It's a melting pot and it's a mosaic that you only look up close, and you'll still see the colors and flavors of each culture in detail. And where can we go to see the wool pot? I don't think there's a wool pot station or a magazine, unfortunately, there are no two. But there's the end, and YouTube has proven to be a driving force. Got talent. We made Susan Boyle, the hottest actor in the world. And she achieved that not through the record labels or the, or the networks, but through grassroots training. Gangnam Style is another great example of how that just took over a huge worldwide world pop. So, world pop also suggests a worldwide pop culture and something that can be shared by all of us and give us a lot of common ground. So, today, what's my call to action? I want to improve and promote cultural exchange between the East and West. I think I've made that clear, but how? I think you can all become pop singers. So that's, that's the end of the job. Unless that's a true one. Um, my call to action is this build and protect that roommate relationship between the East and West. Value this relationship. Take ownership of it. Don't come to Oxford as an exchange student from Taiwan and only hang out with other Chinese students. Why would you do that? You can do that at wherever you can. Don't buy into the headlines or the stereotypes or into the hypernationalism. Think for yourself. And this goes for the East and the West. Both. Get to know one another. And think for yourselves. And don't leave the platform. For a moment, if we could just disregard the governments and the media saying, just for the sake of argument, with our own tools of critical thinking, can we build relationships that actually see one another as individual human beings and not faceless members of a particular ethnicity or nationality? Of course we can. And that's the goal and dream, I think, of a romantic artist and musician. I think it's always been. That's what I wish for. That's what makes music and art so powerful, so true. It breaks down, instantly disintegrates all the artificial barriers that we create between each other. Government, nationality, black, brown, yellow, white, whatever color you are, and shows each other our hearts, our fears, our hopes, and our dreams. And it turns out, in the end, the East isn't that far. And the West, well, the West, so and through understanding each other's popular cultures, we gain insight in each other's hearts and true selves. And for those of you who are just beginning that journey to the Western East, I want to invite you today on this amazing journey with me. And I, as an experienced traveler on this road, on the, on the uh, West East Road, I've prepared a mixtape for all of you today of 10 songs that I love. I was going to bring them off CDs, but my publicist reminded me lovingly that that would be illegal. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a professional recording artist, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> but actually, it only works out nicely because you get to see the music videos as well on a lot of these songs. And these guys, these 10 songs are songs that I have a 
uh, getting no about ten five. And I think he's gonna go off the table too. And um Thank you. 